Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Friday Bible study. Uh, if you're watching with us online or in person, we welcome you. Please let's rise as we take the prevailing prayers. Our first scripture will be from Psalm 100, verse 4. It says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. I want us to open our mouth and begin to thank God for his mercies over our lives, for bringing us in safety, for his mercies over the church of God. Let's just begin to bless his name. Let us begin to glorify his name for his love, for his faithfulness, for his tender mercies. If it has not been the Lord on our side, where would we be? It is the grace of God we've enjoyed. It is the grace of God we've seen all over our lives. It is the grace of God. Let's just begin to thank him, begin to worship him, begin to give him praise. Let's thank him for who he is, for what he's done. We bless your name, O Lord. We bless your name, O God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be worshipped. Thank you for bringing us here safely. Thank you, O God, for another Friday. Thank you, O God, for the Bible study. Thank you, O God, for bringing us all in safety. Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful for the church of God. We are grateful for how far you've helped us. Open your mouth and say thank you to Jesus for his mercies towards us. It's unfailing. His tender mercies are forevermore. His tender mercies are from generation to generation. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We worship your name. Lebradosi halabadoski habayakada. If we have a thousand tongues, it is not enough to worship him for what he has done. Malebarosi hayakasi halagosia. It is his mercies that has sustained us. It is his mercies that has kept us. It is the mercy of God that has kept us alive. Lord, we are grateful for your mercy. We enter your gate with thanksgiving. We enter your court with praise this, after, this evening. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Who can save like you save? Who can help like you help? Who can sustain like you do? Who can protect like you do? It is you, O oh Lord. To you, O oh Lord, be the glory. To be you be the glory and the praise. To you be the honor, O oh God. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, Jesus. Let us begin to plead the blood of Jesus, even for cleansing and sanctification. Uh, I'll read from 1 John 1, 7 to 9. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all our sins. Let us begin to plead the blood of Jesus for cleansing, for forgiveness of sins. The blood of Jesus, male de paros autoria. The blood of Jesus, Malakadoskia Baduskia, the blood of Jesus for cleansing, for purification, the blood of Jesus for forgiveness of sin. Malegere Baroshi Haya Gasute. We plead the blood of Jesus. Malabadoski Hembero Pashatoski Alabado. For everybody that shows up in the service today, we plead the blood of Jesus. Malabadoski Helebero Kodoski Ayabadoshia. We plead the blood of Jesus. Maladas Kukeye Bakalabadoski Haya Gazia. We plead the blood of Jesus. We stand in righteousness as we approach the presence of God this evening mala badoski hele badoski ya ye balekere baduski haya gazia we plead the blood of Jesus let us begin to plead the blood of Jesus even for protection Exodus 12:13 says but the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign making the houses where you're staying 
When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Let's just begin to plead the blood of Jesus for protection of our family, for protection of the household of faith, for protection of our HNC and all its members, for protection of the pastorate, of the workers, the blood of Jesus for protection on our household, over the youth, over the children, over everybody associated with the house of God. We prevent evil. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, no evil, no plague, no disaster. Mala Badoski Hendo Sialada. Leba Babaya Koziala. Leba Doski Hele Badoski Ebaya. We plead the blood of Jesus for protection. Adabari Kaluti has a day. We plead the blood of Jesus. Let us begin to plead the blood of Jesus for access. I read from Hebrews 10 19. It says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus and by the new and the living way, let us begin to plead the blood of Jesus for access. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Malapatsuti halabayadaduski eyeba. When you see us, Lord, you see the blood of Jesus. We stand in the righteousness of Christ and we plead the blood of Jesus. Malabatoski heyabadoski eyebadoski. Lebadatoski eyebakulia. Reba balita yabazute yebada. We plead the blood of Jesus for access into the presence of God. Malabadosi hayaboshi abaya. Robolite yabakasua la badoskiya. Yelika lute rebaduski hele badadashio. Malegere badoski yebakoli aladada. We plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Malabadoski yabagosia. Leba gosia la badoshia. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Right now, we're going to be inviting the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of light, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit of understanding. I'm going to read from Romans 8:6, 826. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. We do not know what we should pray as we heart, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Let us begin to pray in the Spirit this evening as we begin to enter the presence of God. I begin to speak in the Spirit. Begin to speak in the Holy Ghost. If you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, let us begin to speak in tongues. We take over the service for Christ. We call for the Spirit of grace, Spirit of truth to come over and superintend the service. Maladoski alabadoski ayagasute ye. Spirit of wisdom and counsel for our teacher, Malodia Sahuski Indi Roposike Lebado, Lebradushki in Tari Kaluki Lagada, Ilebado Roposike Lede, Wakaluka Laparoski Ayaya, Yelebade Kelebo Kureba, Moli Brodo Shikelebaya, Rabadakali Brodosia. We call for the spirit of light, the spirit of illumination, that the word be illuminated in our hearts. Malakudia sango siaga, regele bakuria kazake lelele, libra kazule lele bosia, leba babadi kalabado. We ask for the spirit of truth, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of counsel, the spirit of might. Malabadoski helebodia, malekelebotia yada, malakokokotia doshia. As it was in the day of Pentecost, malakute rego siokoto, legelebosia gada kuria kada, legeleboko leke de gebo kurabaya, yelika lupa rabada, leba kada rushia gada, lema mama terege sekete. Libro dosi holoto lekete reboski baba. We call for the spirit of God, the spirit of light, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of the fear of God. Lekete kure kedia. We ask for inspiration, for illumination, that the word of God be be alive in our hearts. Malakuti ezede kulia. 
Reba baba la kude hinde ye. Le parosi haya gasiye. Le gede boski ebo kotori alada. Le gete reba sute ebo kolia. Le gete reba sikele dede. Raba baba la kude ebo kule de. La karoki akaja. Ninda karoshi ala. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let us clap our hands as we invite the choir to come up.
Lord, we exalt you. We give you all the glory, all the honor to the Lamb who sits upon the throne. The God that we have come to meet with this day, oh God, we exalt your holy name. We worship you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the I am that I am, the faithful God of Israel, the mighty one, the everlasting Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. Honor and glory and praise, oh God, as we come to study at your feet, oh Lord. We ask, oh Lord, that you open a book of remembrance and remember us for good. Remember us as we study. Bring to our understanding your word. Bring, bring clarity, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands, all you people. You may please have your seats. Praise the Lord. Praise everybody. Good evening, everybody. Say welcome to your neighbor. Welcome to Bible study. Praise the Lord. It's pretty good. The weather is really nice outside, so I don't know where all our friends are, but um, I'm happy to see those that are here. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you made it out. Um, Bible study is very, very important. After we've done everything, we pray, we, we have to come together and study the Bible. We have to come and understand how God wants to speak to us. It has to be clear. So every meeting, everything we do here is so important. So I want to just encourage everybody to always be here. Praise the Lord. So today we're starting a series or we're just focusing on what we are doing in the month of April. And it's about the great works of God. Hallelujah. And the great works of God, it, it, yeah, it means that we also have to experience that great work. So we're going to be focusing on that today and doing a lot of Bible reading, scriptural reading, and God will help us today in Jesus' name. So we're talking about experiencing the works of God. Experiencing the works of God. I believe that as a believer, the more you study the word, the more you look into the Bible, you begin to learn principles on how to get things from God, how to walk with God, how to, you know, we all have needs, we all have things that we're believing and trusting God for. So you cannot but learn this principle. Whether you like it or not, it's very, very important to know how to not just approach God, but to get things done, to get testimonies. And I pray that today will help you see that. I want to make it as simple as possible so that everybody understands the little ones understand, the adults understand, the older ones. I want to be very, very clear, and I pray that clarity will come to us in Jesus' name. So our Bible readings today is going to be taken from John 2, and we're going to go from verse 1 to 11. We'll first read it, I will talk, I will read some other scriptures, and we'll read a lot of scriptures today. We will explain that, and then we'll come back again and focus on this John 2 verse 1 to 11 to understand so we can use it not just to study but also to go into a time of prayer. Is that okay? Praise the Lord. So let's read. We're going to read together. Irrespective of your, that way it's easy for all of us to be part of Bible study. So open your phones, your Bible, wherever you're reading your Bible from and go to John. Turn those Bible pages. If you're looking on the screen, focus and let's read together. Okay, my mic will be lower so that we can hear the microphone, but read the scriptures. So are we all in John chapter 2? So John 2, we're going from verse 1 to 11. Let's go. On the third day, there was a wedding in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now they were set three six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. 
And he said to them, Draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tested the water that was made wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servant who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Canaan of Galilee, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Hallelujah. So this is a story that is very, um, some of us are aware of which we've learned, we've heard about it before, but today we're going to just look at it again in another aspect in experiencing the works of God. But before we do that, I'm going to explain and introduce the works of God so that we can put it in the context of scripture that we're reading. So the works of God, what are the works of God? What are the works of Jesus? What are the things, the mighty acts, things done by him, the great things, the workmanship and the workings is what we're talking about. That's, those are the works of God that we're talking about. So I'm going to just ask a question. A quick question, and I'm not calling any names. You can cross it over, but let's just try. What are some of the activities you can describe as the works of God? What, what are some of the activities you know? If you're a Bible person, what are some of the activities you can describe? What comes to your mind when you say the works of God? Creation. Creation, yes. Creation, yes. What else? What can you imagine that you say, wow, this was the works of God? Yes. Passing the Red Sea, yes. What else can be? What other thing do you see as the works of God, works of Jesus? Yes. The manna, I hear manna. Yes. What else do I hear? The healings, the miracles that Jesus did, the opening of the earth, writing of the Ten Commandments. Those are the works of. Those are the things that God did, and and so on and so forth. Those are the things. So. In the works of God, I want to introduce it. So I'm looking at two aspects. I'll look at it as the creation and the divine order, how God does his works. Then I also, I also look at the history, the historical way God does his works. I'll look at what, how we respond to God's work. I'll also look at what triggers the works of God. And then we'll conclude with this story of the, the marriage at Canaan. See how to apply it and get the works of God, and how we can use it as believers to access the, the experiences that we get from God. Praise the Lord. So that's our content for today, okay? The divine order, the creation. That's the first one we're going to focus, the work of God. Let's look at Genesis 2 verse 2. Everybody turn to your Bible. Genesis 2 verse 2. Let's read. Want to go. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. So we can see that the work of God, God, and God, God rested, that means he did a work. And if you know the, the back story of that, that was the creation story where there was a lot of chaos and then God said, let there be light. He produced light, the animals, the sea, everything was created by God. He made those things. That was the active when you talk of the active work of God, you see that God created all those things, okay? Now, let us reflect on the passive. Like when we reflect on God, let's go to Psalm 8. We'll go to Psalm 8 and we'll read it, the whole Psalm 8 because I wanted to just take maybe one or two, but let's look at Psalm 8 and we'll reflect on it and we'll look at, this is how the psalmist reflects on God. So, are we at Psalm 8? So, go, Psalm 8. O oh Lord, our Lord. How excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mount of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beast of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, 
that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Can you see that God created everything? Like, you are reflecting that, who is man? What are we? That God is so mindful of us. When you look at the, ref you're reflecting on it and saying, he did all this. He created me. You look at, you no, know, sometimes when you look at the creator, so you're always like, oh, God created animals, he did this. But reflect on it and say, who, what am, who is man? That God is mindful of him. Let's turn to Psalm 138, verse 8. Still talking about creation because we're, we're looking at the creation of that. Psalm 138, verse 8. Let's read that as well. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Praise the Lord. So I want you to know that you are a perfect person. Hallelujah. So God will perfect all that concerns me. And I'm going somewhere with you because... As we begin to go into it, you begin to see why you need to experience the works of God. Because some of us don't believe that we are perfect or God created us perfect. And I'm going to show you why. He says you, God should perfect all that concerns us. He should, not forsake, he should not forsake the works of his hands. That means if you're looking at yourself and things are not really how they should be, then you need to ask God, I want to experience your works. And that's, kind of, that's the direction we're going this evening. What will make me, like, I'll look at myself and say, God, this work is not yet perfected. Okay, so he will not, he should perfect the works of his hands. We are described as his handiwork. So look at yourself, I'm the work of, yeah, yeah, tell yourself, I'm the work of God. Let nobody look down on me, I am the work of, as I am, I'm perfect in God's eyes. Hallelujah. Psalm 90 verse 16, let's look at that as well. Psalm 90 verse 16. Appear to your servants and your glory to their children. So let your works appear. Just obviously, we're saying that we are God's perfect servant. We are God's own. And I want you to reflect on that and trace yourself, trace your steps. If things are not perfect, if things are not in line, if things are not in season, then you need to press on to experience the work of God. And I'm going to tell you how to do that. So this is the work of God in his order. Isaiah 29 verse 23. Let's read that first one for creation. Isaiah 29 verse 23. Let's read that as well. Yes, are we there? Isaiah 29 verse 23. But when he sees his children, the work of my hands in his midst, they will hallow my name and hallow the Holy One of Jacob, and fear the God of Israel. So you can see that we, his children, are the work of his hands. We are still in God's hands. We are still God's creation. So no matter where you are right now, you are the work of his hands. You have to continue to say that to yourself. I am the work of God's hands. So that is the creation part. Now, history, like we're going into the historical part. God works with history. God works with times and seasons. He works with his calendar. And if you look at the history part of creation, the Bible talks about the children of Israel. It came a time where they had had enough. God says, after 400 years, I will free them. They will be delivered. So that is another way that God does his workings. He looks at the time. It's time for this thing to happen. So as you grow as an individual, when it is time for you to walk, you walk. It's time to talk, you talk. It's time for you to leave home, you leave home. Everything has its timing. And that's how God has created so that it's a historical pathway that we follow. Let's look at Psalm 40, verse 7, and Hebrews 10, verse 7. Let's look at Psalm 40, verse 7 as well. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. So in the volume of books, it is written of me. That, that means that God has put things about you historically, how your life is going to play out in the volume of books. So as God, God is looking at, he's telling your life story. So when you look at yourself, you have, so, sometimes you have to sit down and reflect, where am I in this story? What chapter of my story is God writing? You have to do that. I can tell sometimes I lie and I say, okay, when I was 10, when I was 20, like that. So people say they are 25. It's okay. Me, I'm 21. Hallelujah. <laughs> because we met them at 25. So I told you, I say, I know you're 25 year old you, but it's okay. I agree. If you're 25, I'm 21. So I'm forever 21. So yes, I reflect on those times and I say to myself, when I was 20, like that, what was I doing? 
What does it mean in God's calendar? And you have to do that. Okay, because last week when our brother was preaching, he talked about asking God for things and then falling into God's agenda. If you remember Hannah, she wanted a baby so much, baby so much, but it was when she realized that I will give him to you. And then God needed a prophet, then the thing aligned. Do you understand? So even our needs and how we work with God to get things must align with his purpose. And that's where the historical part comes in. Your education, your marriage, your children, everything we do in the works of God must align with scripture, align with God's plan. Praise the Lord. You align with his timing. Praise the Lord. So the, so the word of God must be a witness. When you read the word, you must look at it as a witness to the timing of God. What is God saying about me in this season? Praise the Lord. Some people say they are 50, they have jubilee. So what is jubilee about? Some people say they are 40, life begins. What is 40? You learn all those things. Bible says, teach us to number our days. So we'll apply our hearts to wisdom. Where are you in your season? Is it a season to marry? Is it a season to have children? Is it a season to, to serve? Serving is throughout, you know. Is it a season to train? You must know where you are so you, you will live in the works of God. Let's turn to Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. Let's read that. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So it's talking about the historical part to bring deliverance. This Daniel said, I understood by books. That means I studied. Like I said, in the volume of books, I know my season. But the apostle, this is the time for me to do this. This is the time. He said, but I understood that the, the captivity has ended. Deliverance is supposed to have come by now. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not, this is where I'm supposed to be. He understood by books. God's act of deliverance is when you experience the manifestation of his presence, the works, because through his works, he takes you out of a season that you're not supposed to be in and delivers you. And that was what happened with the children of Israel. They cried unto God. They were suffering. They cried, said, God, we can't continue like this, blah, blah, blah. And God says, 400 years is time you move out. And what did he do? Then with the moving out, he did his signs. Through the signs he did with the plagues, he was able to deliver them. And we're going to see how that works. Let's look at Isaiah 28, verse 21. Before we look, so deliverance is one of the ways that God will manifest his works. One of the ways you experience the works of God is through deliverance. God delivered the children of Israel when it was time for them to leave from the hand of Pharaoh. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 28, verse 21. I think it's of the B part. So it says, I want to read that from the, that, that he may do his work, his awesome work, and bring to pass his acts, his unusual acts. That is to say, for God to deliver you, sometimes people like they were in a situation and God had to do an awesome work to bring them out of Egypt to show his mighty acts. Praise the Lord. So how do we respond to the, to the works of God? Because we're going somewhere. Just keep, keep, keep up with me. Our human response, the first thing we meditate on his works, we think of it like, wow. Psalm 77 verse 11 to 12, we continually reflect on his mighty acts and consider his works. That's how you build yourself. He says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. When you begin to think of it like, wow, see how God did so many things then it will make you, more, you will be more confident, you will be more assured that he can do my So you must reflect because it will give you a full assurance. What else do we do about the acts of God? We go into a time of thanksgiving and praise. We are thankful. When God does a mighty act, we're thankful. We look at it, bringing us even into this building. is a mighty act because I'm sure you know that in a, a church, Check Calgary data. It's very hard for you to move to two, two buildings within, within 10 years. It's, 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 the, it's the hand of God. So we are thankful. Plus your $2 million <laughs> land. Praise the Lord for parking. You are thankful. You have to be thankful. You have to be full of thanksgiving. Okay, we bless God for what he does. 
So let's read Psalm 107 and read verse 15, verse 21 and 31. So Psalm 107, verse 15 says, Want to go. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. So when you see the hand of God, what do you do? You give thanks for his wonderful works. For his wonderful works. This is the work of God. Let's read verse 21. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Because he does wonderful works to his children. We bless God for what he does. If you read Psalm 145, it talks about the acts of God. How great and terrible are your works, O God. Psalm 66, verse 3. God is great and terrible. He's faithful, okay? There's a faithful... I'm building you up for something because we're going to go. I've not yet gone to the story. We're still at it. But we're going. I'm building. We're building up something, okay? So that is a testament. So when you see the work of God, you're full of thanksgiving, you're full of praise, and then you proclaim. We declare his mighty acts. That's why you saw on Sunday, you saw 35 people came here standing and talking about God. So Psalm 78 verse 4 talks about declaring and proclaiming his mighty acts. That's what we do when we see the works of God. So when we are experiencing the works of God, these are the things that we do as believers. Psalm 145, verse 2. And we are not going to leave out the New Testament. In, in the New Testament, it talks about the works of God as well, which is the miracles that Jesus did. Jesus is all in all. That is, he is the work of God. He is God and he's also the work. Colossians 1, verse 6, says that all things were made by him and in him do all thing, things consist. By his words, by his spoken words, he created things. So Jesus is the ultimate miracle worker. He's the ultimate one that does the works. John 1 verse 3. And when you look at Matthew as well, Matthew talks about him. He speaks of the works by the Holy Spirit. And if you look at even in Acts, let's read Acts. I want to show you something. Acts chapter 2 verse 11. Acts 2 verse 11. It says here, want to go. And Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues. The wonderful works of God. So even when we are speaking in tongues, Rabba Shantaraba, so we are proclaiming. If you don't know what you are saying, at least sooner we are speaking. The people that were interpreting say you are speaking the wonderful works of God. I know that that's why I love when we do the fact where we say, okay, you get a scripture out. The scripture is in front of you, but you are speaking in tongues. So even when you are speaking in tongues concerning that thing, you are still proclaiming the wonderful works of God. That tongues that you are speaking. So you are connected to everybody, you are proclaiming the one. Just imagine saturating an environment with the wonderful works of God, exalting God, speaking in tongues continually. You are proclaiming the wonderful works of God. You are, you are showing that God has approved the works of Jesus. You know, the Bible talks about it in Acts 2 verse 22. By his name, God approved and sealed it with the works. You know, Jesus was sealed. The miracles he did showed God's approval. And it says here in Acts 4 verse 30, healing also is the work of God. Okay? John talks about it as well. John says the works bear witness that God is who he is. John chapter 5 verse 36, the works of God bear witness. Then you talk about, you know, Paul also talks about we are his handiwork. We are the handiwork. We are God's handwork. We are God's work. Praise the Lord. So what will trigger God's work to manifest. What are the things that trigger the manifestation of God's work? The first thing I will talk about, and we we'll focus on this, is the challenges. So let's go back to John chapter 2 and verse 3. Let's go there. John 2 verse 3. Back to John 2 verse 3 and let's read it. And are we all there? Okay, we want to go. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. The first thing we want to talk about that triggers the manifestation of the work of God is the challenge. There was no wine. She looked and she said there was no wine. I want you to ask yourself, you look at your life, are you troubled? Is there a place where you are stagnant? You don't feel this is right. It's not okay. This, I'm supposed to be here. Jesus' mother identified at that event there was no wine. So today I want to ask you, where is it that there is no wine in the phase of life that you are? What is it that is not really working? It will trigger 
God to manifest his works. That's the first thing. Are you stagnant? The next one I'll talk about is sufferings. Exodus 2 verse 23. Let's read that. Exodus 2 verse 23. Triggering the what will trigger the works of God. Exodus 2 verse 23. Are we there? Okay. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage. And they cried out, and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. One of the things that would trigger is the cry out, crying out because of the hardship, undue hardship. Are you experiencing undue hardship? Is it, you know, sometimes you hear, maybe you are somewhere, you are comfortable in Canada, but when you hear from home or from wherever you are from, your heart breaks. People are calling you. Maybe they even called you today. They are crying. They are begging. Things are not easy. That is undue hardship. You, you are in Canada, but you cannot enjoy Canada because somebody at home is phoning you and saying there is no money, there is no food, we're eating bones. This will trigger the manifestation of the work of God. It will trigger God to manifest. They cried, the Bible said that they cried out and God heard. Crying out for a change. Exodus 20, so let's go to verse 24. Let's read 24. And then we'll read from verse 3 to Exodus 3 to, uh, 6 to 9. So let's read verse 24 first. So God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So when they cried out, when you pray, when you call out in that time of suffering, the Bible says that God heard. He heard their groanings. He will hear, and he will respond. He will remember, like I said, history. God goes back to history. Oh, Abraham, I have a covenant with these people. So when you're hearing undue hardship, undue suffering, you know, it's not supposed to be that way. It's not supposed to be that way. You know, it's, it's very, very sad. I, I was reflecting on it, and I said to myself, many of you, know, many years ago, I mean, in the... <laughs> I don't want to say my, but my, in, in the 60s, my dad came to Canada to study. He was a doctor. And I remember it was very easy to come into Canada and go because he came here, he came to Toronto, he studied, and he went back to, and came back to, went back to our home country, my home country then, had me there, and came back to Canada. So it was easy to move. Things were very easy then. But when you look at it, there's so much hardship that it's almost like, wow. You can't even step out of fear. It's as if you are bound here. It's hardship. And God is hearing that cry and saying, it's, it's not supposed to be that way. There's a deliverance. These things are not normal. Reflect on the abnormalities and say, God, help. Don't just sit here and just be happy because you're okay. I'm okay now. I'm okay. You go to bed. I'm okay. You have to think about it. People are suffering. And there's a cry. And God had, let's read Exodus 3, verse 6 to 9, please. Exodus 3, verse 6 to 9. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry because of their tax masters, for I know their sorrows. Mm. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Etatites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Evites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Can you see that? That even when we cry, God hears. And when he hears, he responds. And that's what, what you have to cry. You can't allow anybody to shut you down. Don't allow them to tell you, oh, no, your own is too much. Don't cry. Oh, it's normal. It's okay. I mean, ah, it's okay. I'm not married. I'm single. It's t t and you're concerned. Oh, don't be concerned. It's, it's okay. That's how it's. No. Shout the more. Blind Bartimaeus, he knew, he knew he was blind. And he was sitting and he heard just was coming. 
And there was a prophet who said, Jesus, he said, they said, keep quiet. He shouted even the more. So when you need help, you shout even the more. Help. Shout. Don't allow anybody to tell you why your own prayer loud. Pray your own. Face your own. Pray. Because it is a need. You cry out. The same people that told him to keep quiet. When they say, okay, when, he now, when Jesus said, where is blind? He said, oh, he's calling you. Come, come. They are the same people that were saying, keep quiet. So don't allow anybody to shut you down when you want to pray. It's your own thing. It's for you. It's you that you're wearing the shoe. You know how it's paining you. So don't allow anybody to say, ah, why are you shouting? Oh, you know, take it easy. Are you, are you going to touch again? Uh -uh. Are you not seeing the weather is nice? Let's go to the park. It's time for hiking, not for church. And you say, no. You say, ah, ah. Church is too much. You went last week. You have to still have to go again today. Just tell them, go away, Satan. Leave me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't be that. But you know what I mean, right? Because you, you know you, you need to, a solution. So how do I experience the works of God? So let's now go into the study. Let's go into it. And let's go line by line. John 2 from verse 1 to 11. The first thing I talked about is cry out. You have to cry out. Verse 3, she said there was no wine. It wasn't there. She spoke up. Let's turn to Psalm 17, verse 6. Psalm 17, verse 6. Are we there? Want to go? I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Okay, when you have sat and you have reflected and you see that things are not okay, what do you do? You cry out. Things are not fine. I don't want to be here. You cry out. You call. I will call upon the Lord. He has inclined his ears to my voice. That is um, Psalm 50 verse 15. You cry out. It's not okay. Psalm 50 verse 15. Yes? Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Do you hear that? You call upon him. When you sit and you think about it and you say, ah, in my family... This thing happens like this, like this. Ah, no. This is trouble. Father, I'm calling on you. How can it be only, be only me in Canada? And I'm enjoying. Meanwhile, everybody other person is phoning me, asking me for money. Father, open that door. How can it be only me that has built a house? Or only me that is prospering? No, Father. You know, you cry out. So that you say you want God to bless everybody. That's how you bless all your, all your siblings. Unless if you're the only one and you are feeling cool that they are phoning you. I don't think it's a good thing. You call out. They are calling you to beg. Your senior is calling you to beg you money. And you are okay with that? No, now. You cry out. You say, God, this is not correct. Jeremiah 29 verse 12. You cry out. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. God says he will listen to you. Okay? Many years ago, I want an example. Many years ago, you have to really know how to identify when you need to move. Many years ago, when I first got married, very young, my husband was working offshore, you know. So this marriage is two weeks on, two weeks off. You know, that kind of arrangement. It was not funny. Two weeks on, so you only see him two weeks. He comes back like that. So once January 2000, he told me, and I had a little baby. He said, you know what? We can't do this thing anymore. Let's pray that God should change this thing. And one of the things that I've learned in, in my own marriage, and I, I hope some of you do it, is that when it's time to do something, you focus and say, this matter, we are going to attack it. And I remember that day. I remember where I was. I remember where I was sitting when my husband came and said, we have to leave this city. So we started praying that night. We prayed almost till morning. Praying that we will leave that city. Not that city was bad, but it was time to leave. It was time to go. So you have to identify it and stay there. Praying, saying, God, this thing has to change. We stayed on it. We were praying. And guess what? Every time my husband came back from work, I would say, is today the day? He would say, it's not yet time. In fact, that's what I said. He said, he said feeling, but when he opens his door, I'll say, are we going? He said, not today. That was what I was doing. Not in an argument, but, you know, innocence. Like, because he's the one that goes to the office and comes back. So he's the one that is seeing everything. So I'm like, are we leaving? I had packed my things. I was ready. Are we going today? He'll say, not today. 
And that was the posture that we have. So you have to make sure that you have that posture. Don't be satisfied with when things are not working and you'll be like, it's okay, God will do it and he'll do it. No! Pray it, keep praying. If it's, it's, turn again, continue praying. Turn like, pray. If you pray like this, you continue. Till you hold it in your hand, you are not there. God will respond. Second thing I'm going to talk about, God will respond. John 2 verse 4. John 2 verse 4. Let's read John, John 2 verse 4. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Okay. He had just is saying his hour has not yet come, but there was a pressing. There was a pressing. So Jesus will do it. Jesus' time is now. Leave this one. Jesus, the mother, don't, that's all the mother said, no, whatever he says, just do it. Because you have to press. You have to say, Jesus, I'm going nowhere to you do this thing. I want you to do it. Exodus 2 verse 12. Second Samuel 22 verse 7. People, you have to stay there and say, now is the time. It's not tomorrow. It's not later. The wrongest thing you can do, let's look at Exodus 8 verse 10 and I'll tell you a story there because you must not do this one. Exodus 8 verse 10, read it. Tomorrow, and he said, let it be according to your word that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. So the backstory of this was that frogs had infested Egypt. There were frogs everywhere in Pharaoh's private room. There were frogs and most came and told God, said, go and tell Pharaoh. That I want to delete, remove these frogs, but when should I remove it? You know, Pharaoh told Moses, tomorrow. Why would you say you want your something tomorrow when you are in the presence of God? I want it when? Now. You say now. When you wake up, it's your morning. You say, it is now. God, it is now. Don't, don't allow anybody to tell you, ah, what kind of prayer is that? Say, yes, I want it now. Praise the Lord. Continuing the story. <laughs> When we decided that we are going to move, we moved to uh, another place. When we got to that place, we didn't buy furniture. You know why? Because you say, we're not staying here. So we were very funny. I had a baby. People would come and visit me. No chair. We sit on the ground. You just said, I cannot buy chair. But I told, we told ourselves that we are not staying here. We didn't buy no fixture. We didn't buy no chair, nothing. So it was very strange. People come, my, you know, we stand in. Ah. They say, no, this, we're, we'll be, we're moving soon. <laughs> so, you, so you have to be very deliberate. We had no fixture, fixtures. We were like the children of Israel. Our loins were gathered, our shoes on our feet. We're ready to go. We don't want to stay here. This is not our resting place. We say, no. Be, my, my load was just in two bags to leave that place. Because you know when you procrastinate, it steals your time. When you say tomorrow, you're just wasting time. You say, I am going I am ready. Praise the Lord. The next thing you have to look at is in verse, uh, John 2 verse 4. Say, pay attention to instruction. Let's read John 2 verse 4. We listen. Pay attention. 2 verse 4. Okay, one, two, are we there? Go. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Then go to verse 5. His mother said to the servant, Whatever he says to you, do it. Praise the Lord. Whatever the church tells you, whatever instructions that are going on in this season, what do you need to do? Do it. Wait for, the, wait for the instructions and just do it. Don't question. Don't start saying, ah, is this the time? Is this the, is it? Do, do it. I remember, like I said, in that season, we were doing every and anything they told us to do. I remember our first hallelujah service. That was almost 20 years ago. How we dressed, how we wanted to be, the flag, everything that we carried to be here. We did it and we're not here. So you do it. The instructions that come from the pulpit, when they said it's time to do, just do it. The, the waiting period is when you engage in the instructions. You know, you engage in your instructions during your waiting period. You know, because I've told you that this manifestation, this thing, God can create by word, he can create by history. So let's say you're believing God to be married or you're believing God, you use your mouth to create the man. Yes, you will sit down in this church and you will say, he will be this, he will be that, he'll be your, that's your, I'm not going to tell you what you do, but you create your own and you will call it forth. 
You are believing God for children, believing God for a job. All things that we tell you to do is the working of your faith. Just do it. Praise the Lord. And I'm not telling you what we haven't done. That's what we did. We believed God. We continue to do those things. Praise the Lord. You engage in the instructions. The next thing is that you follow instructions. When you hear it, listen to the instructions and then you follow. So let's go from verse 6 to 7. Verse 6 to 7. John 2 from verse 6 to 7. Are we there? Okay, read. Now there were set three of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim. Praise the Lord. So the significance of the instruction, first of all, there were six, which is the number of man. He says, fill it with water to the brim. What is water? Ephesians, 2, Ephesians 5 verse 26. Let us read that so that I can show you something. Ephesians 5 verse 26. Read it. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. So the water is the word of God. You fill it to the brim with the water of the word of God. Are you hearing me? So you want God to manifest, you want to experience it, you feel, let's say you are believing God for a house, everything about a home, you fill yourself with that word to the brim. So when they push you like this, the water that comes out is the water of the word because he changed the water to wine. And what does that signify? That means that the water becomes the need. So if it is in church that you receive, what always tells us, you receive your job in church, and you go out and get it. So you fill yourself with the water of the word. You're full of it. You receive, and then you go out and get it. So that thing that you're trusting God for, how much of the word do you have filled in you to get it? I don't know how much. How much Bible study have you done on friendship, on marriage, on children, on job? How many scriptures do you know about that prayer request that you are making? How full are you of that scripture that when they press you, you wake up and say, that's the word? Because that word is what produces the need, which is the wine, right? The, the oil, the corn, that is, that is what will push you, that is what will bring out the need. So you must be full of the word. You learn the word, you, you study. You study for that season. You continue to study and look in the word for that thing that God has spoken concerning the issue. Praise the Lord. So they were full to the brim. That's what the Bible says. The water was full. Are you full to the brim? Are you, have you exhausted the scriptures? I don't know. I'm not sure. Praise the Lord. How well I remember when I went to get married. I can tell you how many books I read on marriage, how many uh, seminars I went to on marriage. My, uh, you, you just be learning. And you may think it's funny, but I'm telling you, when it's time, you, that is what you need to do. It's not like now where you people just go online, just Google one thing, read one or two things, you Google, you feel you know everything because you have Google. It's not like that. We didn't even have internet then. So you will go to seminars, full gospel meeting, you will go to Bible study, relationship seminars, you, go, you will learn. You're looking for a job, you will, you will learn about that thing very well to get it. So to get that experience where God does his works, you have to be full to the brim with the word of God. You read your Bible. That's why Bible study is so important. Being here is so important because you're taking the word for the next season, for the next run. Praise the Lord. So you get prepared with the instruction. The next thing you do is you yield yourself with the, to the acts of faith. So let's look at John 2 verse 8. John 2 verse 8. So let's read it. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. So now you see there's a demonstration there that can bring the highest embarrassment of it all. You can imagine, they say you should take it, the water, and go and give, not to even maybe the auntie that will say, ah, this is water. Mm -mm. No, maybe to a friend that will check, like, ah, is it water you're giving? Take it to the master of the ceremony that will drink and talk. That's to say, God is saying that, even that faith that you're going to demonstrate, sometimes you may feel embarrassed. Sometimes the pastor will say, dress pregnant. And you know you have been trusting God and you, you do those things. Or, you know, you come in hallelujah, you ridicule yourself before God. 
But it's your faith. You come because you have a need that you, you, some people, they feel shy to come and say, oh, pastor, pray for me. Or you are, why are you doing that? It's your own thing. So you humble yourself. And you say, oh, pastor, says, pastor says, okay, it's even in your own house. Dress hallelujah. It's even helping you. you say, okay, dress hallelujah. Yes, nobody is seeing you. It's even, but some people are rock gear. They, they do it. I remember many, when we did one hallelujah. And I remember Dr. Precious was carrying, wearing stethoscope and holding a baby and dressed in a doctor's outfit. Some people were giggly when he was passing, but today is he not practicing? You know, so it's, it's, it's done. So, you know, you carry car keys, you do things, you are practicing, you're doing your faith. Let everybody mind their business. Even if you come with cloth in your stomach, it doesn't concern anybody. It's your own instruction. Praise the Lord. So you follow the instructions. Praise the Lord. And finally, we proclaim... We testify. You know, when you've got it, when God begins to manifest, when, the experience, when God is, you're experiencing his presence, you're seeing, you're enjoying it, you begin to proclaim, like the master of the ceremony. Let's look at John 2, let's verse 10 to 11. He begins to testify. It's somebody else that is talking about what happened. So verse 10 to 11, let's read it. And he said, And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Praise this, the Lord. So you can see that it's the master of the ceremony that is testifying and proclaiming. So when we experience, when we see God's hand, when we see the work of God, we proclaim. We proclaim his majesty. We say, wow, this is just awesome. This is God. This is God's handiwork. This is, this is God that I've seen. Praise the Lord. You know, it's very, very interesting. I remember when I wanted to get married and I was talking about because that was my own experience. Anyways, and I was desirous and I said, God, I want a man that is this, that, that. The day that my husband appeared, the shock on my face, that to the detail, to the name. No, I had to proclaim. I was like, wow. So that's how God works. You have to proclaim. You have to look at it and say, God, this is what I want. This is what you now go. You look at what we've done today. Reflect on it. You look at the history. You look at the divine order. You look at the, the calendar of God, his plan, his purpose. Why do I want to do this? Why do I want to have children? Is it for my own? Why do I? Marriage is for ministry. Like, yes, you might think it's enjoyment. Is it? But the main thing is to do God's work. So if you understand that part, you marry quickly. If you don't understand that part, you'll be waiting for boyfriend. But if you want to do the work of ministry, you want to serve God, husband will come quick, wife will come, because you have made up your mind that that is the work. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is to serve. So you put your need in, the pop in line with God's purpose and see him. That's, why you are, that's how you will experience the works of God. Let's rise up on our feet because I guess that's what it is. Do you have any questions? You want to ask me questions? I only have two minutes for questions. Because we're going to use this to pray. So do we have any questions? I don't want to ask questions today because I feel I made it as simple as possible. So I just want us to be able to pray. So we understand the works of God. So what are the two things? Okay, let me ask you because I think I like, I'm a school teacher, I like to ask questions sometimes. So that, what are the things I said now that helps to manifest the works of God? What are the triggers? Mm -hmm. Yes, so challenges, sufferings, and you want a change. Okay, How, what are the things I talked about when you want to experience the works of God? I talked about them from John 2 verse. So what was the first thing? You cry out, okay? What's the second thing? God responds, okay? The third? You listen. The fourth? You follow the instructions. Praise the Lord. The fifth thing? You yield yourself to And the final one? You proclaim. Praise the Lord. Okay. What are the two things I talked about when we talked about the works of God, when we introduced the works of God? Creation, Yes. And what? And history. Praise the Lord. 
What are examples of historical things that you can look at that, that shows the works of God? History like crossing the Red Sea, the what? The Exodus. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's appreciate Pastor Dada. Let's appreciate the word. So rise up on your feet as we begin to just go ahead and say, Lord, I thank you for your word. Let's go ahead and say, Lord, we thank you. Psalm 119, verse 162. Psalm 119, verse 162. Psalm 119, verse 162. Lift up your voice, say, Lord, I thank you for your word. Psalm 119, he says, I rejoice at your word. I rejoice. One of the ways to check yourself if you are okay spiritually is every time the word of God is being taught, if there's no excitement, I'm telling you, you need, something is wrong. You're supposed to be excited when you hear the word of God. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Say, Lord, I thank you for your word. Some people only come to church when they are scheduled there's a problem with that Christianity already but you by yourself yeah, you, you showed up on time go ahead say Lord I thank you for your word they're only here because they are scheduled either for whatever I can't hear you you're not talking say Lord I thank you for your word you know if the word of God is not exciting you Say, Lord, I thank you for your... First, let's start with that. Let's start with that. We are going to pray. Say, Lord, let, Lord, I thank you for your word. You, you left your house. You came here to hear the word of God. You didn't take the easy part of watching online when everything is fine. Say, Lord, I thank you. And begin to pray for the grace of God that will make you rejoice at the word of God. That you'll be excited about the word of God. That anytime you open scripture or they begin to preach the word of God, that excitement will fill your heart. If there's no excitement, I'm telling you, your spiritual battery is low. Go ahead and begin to say, Lord, help me. Lord, I receive grace to rejoice at your word. Come on, let somebody pray. Say, Lord, I receive grace. Say, Lord, I receive grace. That the word of God will excite you. Maskaya na libra takatalia. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Begin to pray. Say, Lord, restore my hunger for the word. If it's prayer meeting now, the whole place shaking. The, but praying without the word, what's that? The word of God is key. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, help me. Restore my desire for your word. Restore my desire for your word. Are you praying, New Covenant Assembly? The Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, little problem, you see them scattered. So, praying, 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 if the word is not there, it will still show when Christ is come. They just collapse. But you are here, I pray, my brother and my sister, say, Lord, help me. Let the desire for your word return. You can quote me anywhere. Pray from now to tomorrow. If the word is not inside of you, you are not still strong. We've taught it in prayer academy. The word is the foundation of everything. Sing up and down, up and down. No word. It's just voice. There's no content. The word. Say, Lord, help me. Help me to rejoice. Let my love for the word of God return. Is somebody praying? Say, Lord, let my love for your word return. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. You've done well. You've showed up in church. Pray for yourself. That the love of God, the love for the word. The love for the word. Maskaya brakatolia. Go ahead and pray. Some people think Bible study is a waste of time. <laughs> oh no, it's not a waste of time. Maska katala kataya. Kashi kalabato. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Say, Lord, help me. 
begin to pray for the grace to retain the word. Jesus began to say that whenever the word of God is sown, you begin to see different types of hearts. Way, roadside heart, thorny heart, stony heart, is the same seed that was sown. Begin to pray that this word you have heard we bring forth fruit. That the hardness of your heart will be removed. The stones there that choke the word of God. Is somebody praying? Say, Lord, touch me. Touch my heart. Creating me a new heart. Oh, Lord. Yeah. And renew my spirit. Creating me Are you praying for yourself? Say, Lord, help me. You don't want a, a tony heart. You don't want tongues in your heart. Every, every tony heart, Lord, remove. Cast me not away. You don't want a stony heart. You don't want a heart of stone. Heart of flesh. That the word of God can flourish inside. I cannot unto me. and pray for yourself say lord help me let this word bear fruit in my life the word of god is is the is is the ultimate go ahead and begin to pray for yourself that these words jesus speaking says he that hears my words and does them i like him to a wise man that built his house on the rock so it's what we do with the word begin to pray say lord i receive grace I receive grace that this word will bear fruit. I receive grace to do these words. My brother pray, my sister pray. Maskaya Kataya. If it was a concert now to sing, this place full. I mean, this is still a good number. I mean, you've done well by coming. But there should be more. You dance, you dance, you dance all the dance steps. Dance steps that cannot change your destiny. It is the word that changes. Begin to pray, say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Mazataya Kata. Lord, please let your word bear fruit in my life. Check my heart, oh God. Every wickedness in me, every stony heart, Lord, let it be removed. Begin to pray for yourself, Lord. Every hardness of my heart, every tiny heart, Lord, remove, oh Lord. Lord, let my life, let my heart, Lord, be the a heart of flesh, oh God. That the word of God will prosper in my heart and bring forth fruit, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Pray, pray, pray for yourself. Maskatali brado zekete. Matala brande kete di bata. Yes. Maskalente le ketalia. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I believe in Psalm 61, verse 1 to 3. It says, hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayers. You know, uh, Pastor Dada was saying that uh, one of the triggers uh, for, to experience the works of God is by crying out unto God. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto you know this song? From the ends of the earth. <laughs> when my heart is overwhelmed, yeah. Okay, let, let, let the musicians play it. I think the musicians know it. I don't know what it is that is bothering you. 
we've been taught tonight that one of the ways to experience the work of God is to cry to God about the matter. Say, Father! I can't hear you now. Say, Father! In the name of Jesus, I cry to you concerning this matter. Lord, help me. Lift up your voice and pray. You now tell him the matter. Say, my Father, in the name of Jesus, if you want to experience the work of God, the, the woman of God says you cry to God concerning the matter. Come on now, let's do the word of God. This is practicality now. We have been taught, we are now going into, say, Lord, help me. I need help here. Maskeli Patayadoska. My father, I need help here. Be honest with yourself. Say, Lord, I, this is an issue. Help me. Lord, help me. You cry. The children of Israel, they cried unto God because they realized that they needed the help of God. You have done well turning up in church on a Friday night. Cry now. Say, my father, Lord, help me. Say, my father, help me. Cry unto God. Say, Lord, help me. Mazi katopo kayanele keteli ata. Maskele pre keteli. Masakalabade. Say, Lord, help me now. Say, Lord, help me now. Don't be like Pharaoh. They were asking, when do you want me to pray to the Lord to remove these frogs? He said, tomorrow. Why wait till tomorrow if you can collect it now? Come on, let somebody cry to God. Say, Lord, help me now. I need help now. Masakutalabataya. My father, I need help now. Are you crying? There's a way you pray that shows that you need help. There's a way to pray that shows that you need help. You can move anywhere, move to the wall or whatever. If you don't want them to hear what you're saying, look for a space. Turn around and pray. Say, God, I need help here. Maskalataya Badoskia. Mazika Tupala Katoria. Cry. Say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Help me, O oh God. If you keep your mouth short, you are saying you don't have a problem. That is why prayerlessness is arrogance. Prayerlessness is arrogance because you don't you are you have refused to call for help. When we pray, praying is humility, asking God for help. Let somebody say, Lord, help me. The issue is there. The matter is oppressing you. It's beyond you. You can't handle it. You are supposed to say, Lord, help me. If you keep quiet, it's pride. When you need help, you are keeping quiet. It's pride. Say, Lord, help me. Mesizuka tupa yakata, rakato, brande. Refuse to be satisfied with the problem. Refuse to negotiate with the problem. Refuse to manage it. Maskele poteni, maskele kateria, mazazo. Pressing, pressing, pressing. The mother of Jesus told her. He says, it's not yet, Jesus told the mother, he says, it's not yet time. It's not yet time. But she did not back down. She did not back down. God is able to make it beautiful now. Even though it's not time. He can make it now and he will make it beautiful. She pressed. Come on now, my brother, press. Say, my father, you are the custodian of time. Let it be time now. You've got time and seasons in your hand. Who says it's not time, my father? You live in eternity, oh God. Let it be time, oh God. You don't back down because they tell you that the window has closed. Because they have filled the position. You say, my father, let the position be open again. Is somebody praying? The mother of Jesus did not back down. She did not bow down. She did not back down. Don't back down. Don't back down. 
when you don't back down in prayer God is impressed it means you understand God it means you know his nature he's a merciful God you keep crying say God help me say God help me he says men ought to always pray and not to faint Pastor, that I said, until you hold it in your hand, it's not yet done. Absolutely, it's not yet done. Until you have it in your hand, it's not yet done. It's not yet done. Say, Lord, I receive instruction. Say, Lord, I receive instruction. Lord, I receive instruction. She said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Say, Lord, I receive the grace to hear your instruction and to do it. Because after you have prayed, God will speak. Praying is not a one route way. It's a two route. It's a, it's a two. It's a two. It's a dual carriage way. Say, Lord, I receive, I receive instruction. I receive direction. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Are you praying? You are praying tonight. As you go to bed, God will speak. As you are standing there, God will speak. Lord, help me. And the grace, the grace to do the instruction to ignore the potential embarrassment the grace to do it say Lord I receive the grace say Lord help me my degree won't get in the way my shyness won't get in the way say Lord help me help me to obey you to follow your instructions come on pray for yourself say Lord help me some of you, you, God already told you what to do. You have just not done it. And you are praying and he's watching you. No, after you have received instruction, the next step is to do it. Receive grace tonight to do it. Receive grace tonight to do it. He has already told you what to do. Receive grace. He said, but it doesn't make sense. The only way to know is to test it. The only way to know is to test it. Is somebody praying. Is somebody praying? Say, Lord, I receive grace. I receive courage. Mashaka Tobaska, Le Katukayakata, Rakatoboska, Le Pakukatayakata. The grace to do what the Lord has said. Say, Lord, I believe it is you. I am stepping out in faith. Lord, help me. My Abre Ketolia, my Shikele Brede, Mazapro Katani. Say, Lord, as I step out in faith, glorify yourself. Begin to pray. Say, my Father, as I step out in faith, as I do your word, Lord, glorify yourself. Jesus, glorify yourself. Jesus, glorify yourself. My Father, glorify yourself. As I step out in faith, oh God, glorify yourself. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? As I step out in faith, as I do these instructions, God glorify yourself. Are you praying? Are you praying? Mazei Ketelia, Shakala Batalia Nekete, Mazei Bre Ketelia, Mazei Bre Keteli Batayakata, Kala Bataria, Kala Batalagata. When we walk with the Lord In the light of His Word What a glory He shines on our way Yeah 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 your name there. Say, call out. Trust her. Yeah. 
trust and obey. You are going to pray. You are going to pray that prayer one more time because I see somebody standing by a door, and God said, "I told the person to go like this, but this person is standing, still standing." You are going to pray for yourself one more time. Say, Father, I can't hear you. Say, Father, say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace to move and do what you have said. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. It doesn't matter if your legs are shaking, but you are still moving in the direction God has said. It doesn't matter how weak your, your legs are. It may be shaking, but you are, you are taking the step and moving. Say, God, help me. If you stand there, you won't see the miracle. You have to take the next step and the next step. And no matter how he's shaking, but you are moving. That's how it works. With God, you have, he has told you what to do. You need to move. Make a move. And the Lord will honor it. The Lord will help you. He will honor it. He will help you. In Jesus mighty name we pray then you pray say father I will return and testify are you sure because I see many of you, the way, you know, I don't understand what are you shy about they come and whisper in my own ear don't why are you do it say father I can't hear you say father in the name of Jesus I will testify and return glory to God go ahead and pray go ahead and pray if you won't testify, don't say it. You know, he's, he's listening to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I will return and testify. I will return and testify. Pastor, that I said, the, the MC began to proclaim, what a wine, what a wine, what a wine. But no, you, you will just drink the wine and keep quiet. No, God doesn't like that. You just drink the wine and keep quiet. He doesn't like... Come and return glory to him. Say, my father will testify. Hannah returned. He says, this is the son. I asked this God for this child. Look at him. Come on, go ahead. Maybe that is what God is waiting for. To hear you say, I will return and testify. Ayakatoli ibre dayakaza. Askelia. In Jesus mighty name we pray lift up your hand to heaven in the name of the resurrected Christ father on account of our prayers tonight Jesus manifest your glory in the name of Jesus may we return with testimonies so it is and it shall be in Jesus mighty name we pray come on let somebody shout hallelujah one more time let's appreciate the word of God let's I appreciate the word. I appreciate Pastor. That's why you're not clapping. You're not clapping. You know, the essence of the fivefold is to equip the saints so that we know what to do. Say amen. May you return with testimony in the name of Jesus. You have to be rugged in your faith, my brothers and my sisters. She didn't exaggerate anything. Five more stories. My mother came to the house. Say, ah, ah, kola. Kola, no seat. I said, we are not staying here. Sure. All this one people are doing. Do you believe this word? I said, no. We are not staying here. And it was not that the next day we left home. We were like that for almost two years. But the day he came, we left. When I came, he says it today, I say it's today. I, 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 I wonder, are you a Christian? 
I wonder, the little things shake you so quickly. In the name of the Lord, you'll receive courage. I, listen, I'm, I'm praying that you must get to the point wherein all that matters is Jesus. If, if you look at the word and you look at what is happening and what is happening is not matching with the word, you take side with the word. You take side with the word. But no, they start crying. They stop coming to church. They, they, are you a Christian? Ask your neighbor, say, are you a Christian? Asian world! We don't just, it's not an anthem. It's a posture. You take sides with the word, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. so that we manage our time hmm? in the name of the Lord Jesus may you place the word of God as priority in the name of Jesus as we do that the display I'm not saying it's easy we stayed like that okay, maybe because of my mom maybe I, I tried to buy one little if you like don't like the place you don't need to visit me. But I'm not staying here. God has spoken. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may you return with testimony. Six ways of giving. Six ways of giving. Um, let's put it on the screen. Choir, please come up. Uh, for the next 10 minutes, take the offering. So you can give via text, online, e-transfer, NCA app. Those four ways are preferred. They are preferred. They are electronic. But if you are new to Canada or you are old school, you want to use a POS machine, there's one at the back. If it's only cash you have, uh, because you are new, ask for an envelope and they will give it to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's go ahead and begin to worship God with our fight and our offerings. Choir, take it away, 10 minutes. God bless you. Let's give uh, offerings in the form of a dance and a song this evening. Hallelujah.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to say thank you for your many blessings in our lives, out of which we brought our fights, our offerings, our seeds. We ask that you accept everything we have given tonight in the name of Jesus. Those that worship you with their fights, Lord, I pray you rebuke the virus for their sake. Let the heavens over them be open. Now you pour forth a life transforming blessing. Everyone that gave a seed and offering, a gift, Lord, multiply a thousandfold. So it is, and it shall be. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, uh, let's appreciate the choir. Uh, okay, I hear the men are going bowling tomorrow, right? So, uh, look at the man and say, I hope you are joining them. Any man next to you, are you going bowling tomorrow? So, see, he, here, here's the thing, and I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a, man, I don't know, men thing. Women, women gather quickly, say amen. Women gather, you know, but men, let the men say amen. Please, let's hang out together. Let's, that's how you get to meet your brother, your sister, eh, sorry, your brother. <laughs> There's no sister there, oh. So please, encourage your husband to, I don't know if the window is closed for the bowling, but you meet other people. Hmm? You'd be shocked at the, at the people you would meet in this church and the connection you form. You'd be shocked. But all this, I, I'm a man by myself. I don't need anybody. May the Lord deliver you in Jesus' name. Even God is not alone. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So don't isolate yourself. Look at them and say, don't isolate yourself. Okay, um... Is there any exercise tomorrow? Ex no. Okay. Those of you that were not at the last exercise, I hear you went to buy some kits, right? So you have your kit now. Hmm? Next Saturday, soccer dome. Say amen. Better do this exercise now because spiritual exercise is coming. You know what I mean, right? 
and that is fasting. Praise the name of the Lord. By this time next Friday, by the grace of God, we'll be having the first guest minister for this year, 2024, in New Covenant Assembly. Hallelujah. So all the way, you're not clapping, you're clapping, clap well. All the way from the Gold Coast of Africa, the country called Ghana, we have, um, it's actually a prophet, but Reverend Eric Emeku. Hallelujah. Let's clap, let's appreciate God. He's been, he's been coming to NCA, um, you know, almost yearly, but anyways, he'll be here next. So you, now listen now, look, look at the theme, battle arts, right? It's a it man is a prayer somebody. Say amen. Yes, because strong prophetic ministries are birthed often out of prayer and the word, right? So you would do well, invite people, and let's have a fantastic, fantastic time. Battle arts. Mm, I'm so excited. Praise the name of the Lord. Then um, after this, so after next Friday, the Friday after that one will be the threshing floor. So this is going to be the first time we'll be having the threshing floor. Uh, like I said, it will start at 2 p.m., seven hours straight. The regular service will start at 7 normally. So if you are coming at 7 p.m., we'll have been five hours ahead of you. But, you know, but whatever you can do. If I were you, I will plan for this service. It's time to separate the chaff from the wheat. Say amen. You know, intimacy with Holy Spirit is not every time I love you. I love you. There's a walking that he has to walk to. Say amen. Some like circumcision. Like circumcision. It can be painful, but you have to just cut it off. This one is for serious Christians. And the Lord, and I'm and I know you're a serious Christian. Say amen. <laughs> the Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. On Sunday, this Sunday, we'll be talking about provoking the works of God, provoking the works of God. I, I'm very excited about the word because it's something you can use immediately as you get to office. And yes, you are deeply spiritual, you know, so provoking the works of God on Sunday. Is there anybody here? Today is your first time. Let's just acknowledge you and anybody. Oh, wow. Praise God. Can we show them some love? Come on and say, show some love. If you are watching online and you are new, please scan the QR code. God bless you. Um, please come back on Sunday so that we can welcome you more. Amen. Um, ushers, let's give them a gift. Come back on Sunday, we'll give you another gift. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, we love you so much. We composed that song for you. So we sing it in full on Sunday. Hallelujah. Okay, let's close out the service. Oh, be with your church, Lord. Build your church, Lord. Make us one, Lord. Make us one, Lord. Build and see So our Father and our Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, for the time we spent in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We receive grace to be doers of these words in the name of Jesus. We cover everybody here with the blood of Jesus. 
and we say on account of the blood of Jesus, no evil, no plague, no disaster shall light upon us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we pray that you take us home safely and bring us back safely on Sunday in the mighty name of Jesus. Honor, glory, power, praise we ascribe unto your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. Now by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. So it is and it shall be in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you please shake hands with at least 12 people and tell them experience the works of God. God bless you. See you on Sunday.